Hello everybody, welcome back to Evolve. We're going to be playing as Behemoth in this one. I guess we just recorded two videos that were full of the usual rants that people seem to enjoy, but also, you know, explaining the game's lore, uh, going into detail about the monsters, and all the sorts of stuff that, you know, goes on in this industry and why it's gone downhill. You're three seconds up, it is me. Um, I recorded the non-commentary video and didn't turn my game volume back down uh, following it, so... All of that wonderful discussion was very far behind the actual game's audio, and you could barely hear me, so we're going to do this again, basically. We're just going to play Behemoth again. Um, it's Rogue Val Cabot Crow and Hyde. It's quite a solid little team. Um, Crow just sort of exists against Behemoth. He doesn't really do too much, honestly. Uh, Hyde has synergy with Cabot, though, in quite a big way because these toxic clouds while we're being amplified are very strong DOT so we'll have to see. Rogue Val's an aura based healer. But usually any team with a Cabot on it is a scary one so... I'm gonna take you to the building that stage 2 removed for some reason. There was a lot of stupid shit that was done with stage 2, honestly. Um, stuff that I still have no idea why it was done to this day, but... You know. I'm gonna get myself down here. The only conceivable reason I can see that they would remove the interior from this building is that... Um, there's corpses in it. These guys are really keen to die. I could have probably killed them both there, but it's fine. Uh, we need to not be here, ideally, because they are going to be... Yep, yeah, they are. We're going to dip. It's probably going to be line of sight as well, if I had to guess. Good. So being at stage one, we are running for our life. That's me being tracked. Holy shit, that was quick. That's fine. Shall we use Behemoth's unique traversal? We use the only monster in the game to actually use a bar-based uh, traversal rather than a, you know, like a token sort of one that has like three, three uses. We are getting there towards stage two, though. Just need one more, and then we'll get our revolve on. Shit, it's me getting stuck on a rock. Except the game said no, basically. There we go, we've got some over here. We've got a lot over here. Uh, we're going to immediately go for this. It's a bit dangerous, but I think we've got enough distance, honestly. Quite concealed here as well. There we go. We shall eat two of my babies. Yeah. It was funny back in the day. There was a, there was a theory going around when Behem was first announced that he was basically just a giant obsidian grub. Because he looks very similar to it. But he is, you know, he is alien because people did think he was like native to Shear. That did feed into the theory though as well that everybody thought, well not everybody obviously it was a theory, but you know, you thought that every monster was um, native to Shear. It was like a, it was like a planetary defense kind of thing because humans were here to destroy it as we always do. Ooh, cooldown reduction, nice. Um, but yeah, that was obviously debunked towards the end when they revealed, you know, the actual story and it was actually alien. Alien monsters, they shouldn't be too far behind. I think that was in there, was it? That was a river. They are coming through here though. Ah, uh, they've got the defense buff, okay. I just scuffed his uh, thing there and we do actually get the right one there, which is good. 
I'm not tied back into the bone. That's there you go, nice. I don't know where he just went. Yeah. Oh, he's shielded at the moment. That's not going to be a good target. We'll go for Crow, because it does mean we get the dome down if we're getting incapped. Should have peaked there, fella. Good. We get him with the wall. Get that cloud because Cabot's about to be up, I think. Oh, looks. I tried to down the uh, colonist there. Uh, Cabot is now up. We're getting out. I've got no armor. Definitely need some armor against uh, Cabot. We will go in for another one there. Here. I'm not going to go straight for the evolve. I'd like to get a couple more strikes. If pos. I'll do. Good. Get me another one. Let's hide though, he's gonna have his shield. Yep. Overshot that wall massively. Eh. Yeah. It's fine. You're getting down there. Get him. Nice. Just do a bit of an interrupt there. Get ourselves out. Quite fruitful. That's what I was talking about there, by the way, when Stasis doesn't have any effect on Behemoth, because he can still... Because obviously it's momentum itself that's propelling him forward. We're just going to give ourselves a bit of a slither here and we'll go back in and then we'll go to stage 3 after this. Good. That's a lot of DOT heading your way, fella. Rogue Val would be nice to get. She's just literally used a second life instantly there. That's. Bit of a scuffed bot play, but it doesn't mean I'm going to get this for free. I've lost all my armor though, very quickly there. Good. I'm just going to push this man all the way over here just to piss him off. While we go for the evolve. He's minigunning me at the moment. Doom Beetles do be scared of stage 2 monsters. We'll go and uh, get ourselves up here. Always do that stage 3 wall, because I do think it is fucking wonderful. That move speed. Ooh. Cooldown reduction's about to run out as well, so... Uh, somebody said to me a couple of months ago, I don't know if they're still watching, so I do apologise to you, I want to show this off. Um, that it makes him uncomfortable, he's back. But it's it's a very nice detail on this monster, let me line it up properly first. Uh, if you see the little the little slimy sort of tendrils on his back there, where his spine is, that are holding his, his plate in. It sort of implies that the rock is actually alive itself. Whilst it also does look like rock, you can sort of see that he is injured as well. So it's like mimic kind of rock, in a way. Like how it's got blood on it, you know, like... I don't know what to call them. It's not blemishes, but it's... You know, it's scarred, obviously. Um, yeah. 
Oh, his little tail swirls. I, don't, I didn't notice that. I've never actually seen that before. You can do it again, buddy. That's fucking adorable. I didn't know his, uh, his tail did that. That's nice. Because <laughs> he do it when he's crouched. Nah, that looks like a very small animation, that. But yeah, um, in his sneaking animation as well, he's the only open when he's, you know, exerting by crawling. On his back, you can sort of see, like, it's it's very reminiscent of Wraith, this. And this is what I was leading on to in the previous video that I lost uh, when I was explaining uh, how each monster is sort of... The, like the, the progression, the, the progression basically of the monsters. So, Wraith obviously has the tendrils on her back that simulate her emotion, where Behemoth has his plates that do it as well because they close when he, you know, when he's sneaking, and then they open back up a bit. And you'll also notice that Behemoth himself is actually a lot smaller than he is, you know, because of the rock. Another aspect of his design that you probably won't see too much is his hands. So his hands in a lot of instances sort of look like stumps but if you look there you can see they are actually huge like the rock like that sort of that's going into the terrain. But then them two little spikes there are actually his fingers. This is very similar to Kraken because Kraken has huge uh, claws and nails. Um, that's obviously very similar to you know uh, Kraken himself. I do love his um, sneak animation. I do think he has one of the best sneak animations. It's very menacing as well, the way he's, especially when you do it sideways, sort of like that, like strafing. It kind of just looks like a walk animation for this. It's very reminiscent of, obviously, the tank from Left 4 Dead, which is obviously a silhouette uh, inspiration for this monster, I do believe. Because uh, that's very similar to how the tank walks. You don't really see the tank walk in Left 4 Dead, but it is very similar. Uh, the two the two guys are very similar, I should say. Uh, somebody also said, just on a different topic, that this is very similar to a monster from Pacific Rim. I just want to get that in there. Uh, I don't know what they called it. I can't remember what they called it. They said it was something like... It was something back, like a, a bramble back or ridge back or something like that. Uh, that would probably be because some of the people who worked on Pacific Rim actually worked on this game. So, in a way, it's weird because this game's sort of like a... An unlicensed Pacific Rim game in a way, uh, where you can actually play as the monsters, but yeah. You know, more detail in a single character for you there than about 80% of fucking AAA games that come out these days, because, you know, I mean, what am I as a, a consumer anyway, you know, what, what's, you know, my uh, understanding of it, but you know, who wants detail and get, um, decently made games, you know, we just want very quick shitly made trash to get as much money out as possible that only has like a year in its lifetime before, you know, it turns into a project, uh, project that you've spent billions on, for uh, fuck all. Uh, apparently that's the correct way to uh, make the- alright lad, you okay? Uh, that's apparently the correct way to make games these days, so what do I know, basically. Um, this team has incredibly uh, fucked this, by the way, because they've split up way too much. And it's gone tits up very quickly. Shit, I ever shut up. It's weird because this game, I've, I've, well, I've not said it in the past, I've, I've, it's, not, it's a new line I'm working on, basically, this. Um, this game is basically a glimpse into an alternate timeline where you know we actually made video games with care and attention and probably in that timeline we've made a lot more fucking money as a result because we're not just like having to bin projects in less than a year uh the less than a year part also comes from the fact that tcm have basically just said they've, they've not i'm gonna obviously start this by saying that you know they've not said that they're gonna discontinue the game but they've they've effectively said they're going to discontinue the game because basically they've come out with a post and said we've got content planned until August I believe it was they said I don't know what the specific date is but it was sometime in August so that basically means that up until August that is basically the lifetime of that game what's left of it 
uh, which means as well, I can't remember specifically when TCM came out, but I think that rounds it out to about a year that game has uh, been alive for. Because I'm telling you now, you, you'll get to August and they'll think, nah, there's not enough players, turn the servers off, we've got all the money. And it will just become another game for the ever-growing pile of shit decisions and lack of self-awareness within the publishing industry and the gaming industry as a whole. Because we seem to have just forgotten between now and... When was it? I'd say about 2016, 2017 maybe, around that era. Uh, between then and now, obviously, we seem to have forgotten as businesses and you know people who are actually seeking to make money that if you actually make something that consumers want to buy and actually will enjoy, you will actually make a lot more fucking money in the long run. Uh, there is the concept that quite a lot of people, you know, especially in a higher up stance of business, this is coming from somebody who doesn't work in business but has a basic fucking concept of the. Uh, you know, the industry, uh, the sector, I should say, um, that spending money to make money is actually a very real thing. Uh, because if you invest in something that is actually good, you will make more money in the long run. Because we're consistently seeing, and from the consumer standpoint, it is getting to the point now where it's really starting to fucking piss everybody off um, in this industry where the tried and tested method of making a trailer before making the actual game itself and then releasing hot dog shit onto you know storefronts everywhere isn't fucking working for companies it just isn't but the companies themselves don't seem to be learning this in this day and age like it's it's baffling honestly the, the fucking stupidity that's on show these days um because it's it's just like nobody is observing the mistakes that are being made it's just the same shit that's being done over and over and over again and it's the reason why companies developers publishers all of them are going out of fucking business here, here there and everywhere you know because it isn't fucking working yet you can have a game like evolve that's dead that has massive amounts of replayability not by rng just because it looks good and it's been it's had effort put into it you know, its characters are likeable, its monsters are likeable, you know, the the the, the well animated, the monsters, they're a fucking set piece of the game, basically. There are reasons to keep playing from both sides of the game because of how well animated they are, how well detailed they are, and the attention to care that's actually fucking gone into them. Because you can tell that the people from Pacific Rim did actually work on this game, because there's been effort put into it. Hollywood basically worked on this game and they put effort into it. Lo and behold, people who weren't actually in the gaming industry strictly made a better game than people who aren't who are actually in the fucking gaming industry today you know and that's what pisses me off about it because we've got a game as i've just said towards the end of here which is basically a glimpse into an alternate timeline where these types of games are being made on the regular in 2024 for me in this other fucking timeline and i'm seriously fucking envious of that bastard because he's, he's having the time of his life at the moment. This game's like DVD in that universe at the moment. There's fucking monsters, there's about 30 monsters by now. And I don't know, like, I don't know what the equivalent is, the math there. We'll just say about 50, 60 hunters at this point. Um, and, you know, we're all having a good time and we're all eating good. But in this particular timeline, we chose the shit option. And, you know, this comes from somebody who did enjoy DVD. I did enjoy it back in the day. But we've had about, in terms of DVD at this point, we've had about four to five years of just general fucking stagnant content, for me, at least. Because I'm, I'm not the only one who says this, you know. It's not just me trying to shit on another game because like, this game's dead, you know, that sort of thing. It's not. This is me genuinely making my own thoughts and opinions on this, in, this uh, particular topic because it's something people don't, they don't talk about it and it's weird to me and especially when this game exists i mean granted that some people in the streaming they, they, they don't know it actually even exists at this point so there is that argument obviously but this game exists and people are streaming dbd but they're not saying how shit it is as a game because it is <laughs> you know like there's there's no 
Uh, in DVD, there's no attention to detail. There's no atmosphere. It's not a fucking horror game, despite being advertised as one. It just there's nothing engaging about it for me personally. And obviously, this rant's now turned onto you know based on my thoughts. But this is where a lot of my anger and stuff comes with this industry and just in whole in in a whole, you know. Um, but there, I've watched people play Dead by Daylight and I've watched people play TCM and on both games the stupidest shit will happen and the laziest shit will happen but nobody fucking speaks about it nobody says anything negative about it and it's, it's weird to me because by not speaking about it and by not sounding like I sound at the minute which I, put, I probably I put money on people not wanting to sound like I sound, but I've just got a bit of a deadpan voice anyway. I sound like a bit of a fucking moper and, you know, a downer and all that sort of thing. But this is just genuine honesty. Like, if they actually said this is shit, people would, the developers of the game would actually have to put their ass in gear rather than just shitting out the, the bare minimum of content each time. And we'd actually have a game that's actually decent and, you know, can fucking stand up to this one honestly and you know i'm not afraid to say that i know the game's dead but i'm not talking in terms of player numbers here i'm talking about actual the art in it and the game design itself and the attention to detail and all that sort of thing in the atmosphere because put it this way ladies and gents um we've had a horror game at the top of the asim genre that isn't a horror game We've had a horror game at the top of the ASIM genre that doesn't have gore in it. We've had a horror game at the top of the ASIM genre that is basically a glorified ring around the rosy fucking simulator for eight years. And people somehow are not bored of that shit yet. And the reason they are not bored of that is because there is no competition for it. Because, leading back full circle, developers, publishers and companies behind games these days do not fucking put effort into the things they make. That is the full circle, you know, the vicious cycle of what I'm talking about. That is the base, it just is what it is. They don't put effort in anymore. That's that's what it is and why we're now stuck here with Evolve being dead. And I've said it in the past as well, I've said it on a couple of occasions, it, it is one of my beliefs of why they won't actually revive this game because there is too much effort to be put into it. I do genuinely believe I, I, at least in some parts, a deciding factor of why they did not commit to reviving this game when it had 2,500 players playing it when it's not even available on the Steam store. Yeah, two and a half thousand people were playing this game that isn't publicly available. Yeah, they didn't revive it because they looked at the monsters and thought, fucking hell, we're actually going to have to put some fucking effort into, you know, keep consistent with this game's art style. And I genuinely believe that is one of the factors why they didn't revive it because in in this day and age the fucking microtransaction dlc bullshit arguments age like milk quite honestly the people who were crying about it back in 2015 2016 are now fucking doing gamble streams and doing loot boxes and all that shit so it's bollocks quite honestly the dlc argument doesn't even exist anymore as far as i'm concerned the only dlc argument i can bring up in this particular instance that is bullshit is the fact that TCM is trying to sell you a skin you now for $15.99, which is how much this full animated play playable character was back in 2016. Yeah, and they basically over at TCM have strapped some guy's name on a skin and called it Premium, and they're charging you $15, uh, $14.99. I think it, no, $15.99 is $15.99. The same as this character, and it comes back again. People aren't saying anything. They're all right with that, apparently. There are people buying that shit without actually, like, thinking whatsoever. Yet, when this game came out and they revealed this monster for fifteen ninety nine, dollars everybody fucking took arms. You know, everybody was fucking like, whoa, shit, we can't be having this, you know? Yet, a fucking skin, not a playable character, no new animations, nothing game break, no, no gameplay, nothing changes the game flow. A fucking skin. Nobody gave a shit. So there's fuel for the DLC argument being dead. As to why this game can't be revived. And obviously, you know, on top of the fact that 
it fucking it, it looks like a <laughs> it looks like a fucking triple A game that came out today, mate. To be honest, given the, the fucking dog shit that comes out these days. But we're going to close this one off. Um, I do believe I managed to get my thoughts in there at the end, anyway, from the previous video because it's still it's still bubbling away in the cauldron of the mind in terms of you know the cauldron of high blood pressure. Um, in terms of why this game shouldn't be dead and the absolute fucking state of this industry these days or this genre in general because I'm not going to sit here and say that every AAA game that comes out these days is shit you know, I'm not actually saying that I'm just saying that you know, effort has severely dropped to put it kindly <laughs> um, but yeah, there it is I will hopefully see you for the next one Bye.